hello and welcome to another video. You've joined me in my home office here. This is where I do all my editing for all my YouTube videos on the computer behind me there. And the reason for me being at home in this video is that we're currently on the coronavirus lockdown. So we're not actually allowed to get out on the bank fishing, unfortunately, but I feel like it's important to do our bit to stay at home and you know save lives and hopefully it won't be too long before everything gets back to normal. So this video, as I'm filming from home, I'm not going to be actually fishing in this video obviously, but I'm going to be giving you my 10 hacks to save money in carp fishing because let's face it, carp fishing is a great sport but it can be very expensive and very hard on your wallet. So what better opportunity than when I'm stuck at home to talk about this. I've been promising you this video for about a year now on my channel but I've just not had a chance to get around to it because I've been sort of putting out fishing videos you know but now that I'm stuck at home I might as well do 10 hacks to save you money. Hopefully you can get something out of this video and save enough money that you can get fishing a lot more often because at the end of the day that's what we all want isn't it? We just want to be on the bank and doing what we love. So um, without further ado make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my upcoming videos that I'm going to be filming from home in the next few weeks. Make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment below if you've got any hacks for us for saving money in carp fishing as well. So keep watching for the rest of the video guys and I hope you're all staying safe. join a club or a syndicate water. Day tickets, as I'm sure you know, can be very expensive, on average £25 per 24 hours. So if you're fishing every weekend, say 48 hours a week, that's 50 quid a week, £200 a month, so it works out to almost £2,500 a year. So you can see there's a big chunk of money going out on, on day tickets there. Most clubs, are, you're looking at somewhere between as low as 50 quid for the year and some of them might be sort of 300 quid for the year but it gives you a lot of different waters usually with a club and unlimited fishing for very little money so the club's the absolute cheapest way to to fish regularly and a syndicate generally a little bit more expensive they start you know sort of two to three hundred pounds up to you know well some of them are really expensive like a couple of thousand pounds but I'd say your average is sort of between three and five hundred pounds and usually it's better quality fishing at a syndicate you know you've got fewer people fishing there because generally membership is limited to a small number of people and generally the fish are better quality because they've not been fished for as, as much like a day ticket you know they tend to get caught really regularly and the mouths get damaged and everything Quite often in syndicates as well you'd find um, bigger fish and just generally nicer looking fish because um, the initial investment was put into buying good stock for the lake and uh, they're not just sort of a commercial money making thing where they just bulk buy a load of sort of plain fish that'll grow quick you know so generally syndicates you get nicer fish, um, quieter peaceful fishing and club waters you know it's a bit of a mix but generally it's really good value for money so so get online you know look for clubs in your local area ask your mates ask online that sort of thing and find a club that suits you it's got the fish that you want that suits your budget and is close enough to home that it makes it practical for you and I'm sure you'll save a fortune rather than fishing day tickets where you know you, you really are paying a lot you're paying a premium for your fishing Hack number two for saving money is to bulk buy your bait. Now, everyone knows bait is a very expensive part of carp fishing, but you are getting really top quality, high nutritional value food for the fish. If you are just buying boilies, buy in bulk. Hi, uh, uh, can I make an order for some bait for delivery, please? How much um, loads? Oh, that must be my bait order arriving. Let me just have a look. Yes! 
you can order from a lot of the bait companies directly now and they'll do bulk deals where you know you might buy 20 kilos at a time you might get 50 kilos at a time and the more you buy generally the price comes down a good tip here is to get together with your mates you know you might only have space in your freezer for 20 kilos but if you've got two three four mates who all want to buy 20 kilos it adds up to quite a lot of bait between you but the price comes down for each individual person buying the bait and another plus side of that is if you're all fishing the same water every time they go fishing they're baiting up that bait for you into the water so that the fish are kind of getting used to eating that bait as well so it's an extra bonus you're getting cheaper bait and the fish are getting used to it so it's win-win really so yeah hack number two is bulk buying bait hack number three to save you money is to save all of your rig components off your old rigs. I see so many people when they've got a blunt hook on a rig, you know, the points turned over, they just throw the whole rig in the bin and start, you know, tie a new rig with all new components. But there's no reason you can't reuse a lot of those components, even if the hook is completely gone, you know, you can still reuse a lot of the components it can be quite expensive for items such as putty you know and rig rings and swivels and everything it all adds up so what I do is I've got a, a maggot tub like a bait tub and at the end of the session I'll check my rigs and if the points are still sharp they go straight back into my rig box and if they're blunt I'll put them into my bait tub and then when I've sort of got a load of rigs there then I'll spend an evening just cutting them up, you know, saving all the components off them, put everything back in the packets, back in my tackle box, and ready for making new rigs, you know, and there's no reason why a, a tub of putty, which can quite often cost you more than 10 pounds, there's no reason that shouldn't last you a whole season or a couple of seasons, you know, you don't have to keep throwing it away. And it's, it's, it's a no-brainer, but not many people think about it, a lot of people just use fresh stuff every time they go fishing and they end up just spending a fortune over the year. I bet if you add it up you'll work out that you're spending a lot of money on rig components. So tip number three is to save all your rig components and reuse them. Hack number four to save you money is to resharpen hooks. So if you bring in your rigs at the end of the session and you check the points, don't just throw away the hook and the rig you know leading on from the last tip really um, check your points and if you think they're not turned over they've just gone a bit dull you can actually resharpen them up again using a file or a little stone you know you, there's loads of hook sharpening equipment available now on the market and if that hook point hasn't turned over and it's just gone a bit blunt you can definitely resharpen them a pack of hooks is usually five pounds plus these days so you're looking at 50p per hook so if you think you're going to be getting through maybe six hooks in the session it soon adds up over the year if you can just tickle those points and just get them nice and sharp again you might just get another two or three sessions out of them and save yourself quite a bit of money hack number five is supermarket baits one of the biggest expenses in carp fishing as I'm sure you know, is bait. You know, you're looking at 10 to 15 pounds for a kilo of boilies, five to seven pounds for a kilo of pellet. And it all adds up, particularly if you're buying it one kilo at a time. But if you head down your local supermarket, there's so many different food items that make amazing baits. You know, you've got obvious things like sweet corn, pepper army, um, any of your tinned meats, you know, things like that. And also, you've got your dog biscuits and stuff for floaters. You know, you can soak them in, in a bit of your bait glug if you want, add a bit of flavour. And then you've got bait additives for making up spod mixes, such as tuna, that's a really good one. You've got glugs like um, any sort of sweet sauces that you might get in the dessert aisle. So, if you're looking to bulk up your bait for cheap, head down your local supermarket and also don't forget your local animal feed suppliers. Many items can be found there such as 
pigeon conditioner is an absolutely great particle bait. Just soak it for 24 hours and then boil it for half an hour. And that can be used much the same as hemp, you know, um, in a spod mix, etc. Sometimes it comes flavoured with aniseed, that works well. And things like Vitalin, which I like to use because it kind of binds and mixes together. Uh, Vitalin is like a dog, a dog muesli that you can use. And yeah, just uh, try things out. There's, there's loads of sauces and spices you can find in the supermarket. It's really up to you. Um, have an experiment and see what works. Hack number six is all about your fishing line on your reels. So what I like to do is reverse the line. So when you think about it, you, may, you might have 300 yards of line on your spool but generally you're only going to use the first 100 yards or so, depending on how far you're fishing. And the line behind that on the spool is still going to be brand new. It's never been used, never been cast out. So what I like to do is strip the line off onto some distance sticks and then using a drill and an old spool, rewind that on to the spool and then wind it back onto your reels from the spool once you've soaked it in water. And that turns the line around. So the the new line at the back of the spool now becomes the front of the spool and you've got double the life out of your line. So that's a really good tip for you to extend the life of your line. You're looking at 20 pounds for a bulk spool of line. You don't want to have to be replacing that every couple of months when your line gets worn out. Just reverse it on your spool and you get double the life out of it. Hack number seven to save you money in carp fishing is to get sponsorship deals. Now this might be a controversial one and not everyone wants to be sponsored but the cheapest way I think to get all your bait and all your tackle is to get sponsored. A lot of tackle companies now, in fact most of them, will offer at least some sort of discount for loyal customers and returning customers and customers who post a lot on social media and tag them in posts and things like that. So it's well worth um, looking into if you can get a deal with the people that you're currently using. But if you're constantly out there catching a lot of fish and you know, you're know sort of busy on social media and things like that, you can definitely get full sponsorship where you get everything for free. So it's worth looking into that. And actually, the next video on my channel is gonna be a dedicated video all about the subject of getting sponsored and the, the tips of how you go about getting sponsored. Not everyone wants to be sponsored, that's fair enough, but if you wanna get all your bait and tackle and things for free then I've got a video coming up that could really help you out with that so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that coming up. So that's it for hack number seven, getting sponsorship deals and discount deals from tackle companies. Hack number eight to save you money in carp fishing is to use non-carp tax items. Now what do I mean by carp tax? Well most people know that as soon as you put carp fishing in the title of a product the price doubles, triples, you know, it's very expensive as soon as it's anything to do with carp fishing. So if you buy, say, a head torch from a carp fishing company, generally you're looking to pay twice the price of a head torch from, say, an outdoor camping store or something like that. Same goes for any of your cooking equipment like uh, camping stoves and things like that. So it's well worth shopping around, trying to find same items for less money from non-fishing related companies. The same goes for all of your clothing. So if you buy all of your, you know, your tracky bottoms and your hoodies and things from tackle companies, it can be very expensive. You know, you're looking at 45, 50 quid for a hoodie or something like that. But if you just go to your local supermarket or you know cheap clothing stores, um, you can find hoodies for you know a lot less. Let's put it that way. Even buying online and things like that. And I think stuff like clothing isn't that important to catch your fish, you know. I don't mind using branded stuff when it's an important part of catching a fish, you know. Obviously, hooks have got to be good quality, so pay your money for things like hooks. Rods and reels, you know, you get what you pay for. The more you spend, the better in terms of quality, really. But when it comes to things like clothing and head torches and cooking equipment and stuff like that, you don't need to spend an absolute fortune on all the branded stuff. So. This hack is all about just shopping around and not using carp tax products. Hack number nine, it's a little bit counterintuitive this one, but 
bear with me. Um, hack number nine is to buy the most expensive gear that you can afford. Now what I mean by that is, the more you spend on an item of tackle, usually the better quality it's gonna be and the longer it will last you. So when I first started carp fishing, I had a set of three rods that were about 50 quid each, you know, and that's super cheap for fishing rods, especially the carp fishing rods, you know. And they probably only last me about a year before they lost all of their sort of strength and rigidity. They went a bit floppy, you know, and I could barely cast out a three ounce lead with them. Um, playing fish was a bit of a joke, they didn't have any backbone to sort of lean into the fish and I very quickly realised that I needed to upgrade so you know I'd wasted my money really, I mean it got me going, it got me started but I, I very soon realised that upgrading to better quality gear actually saves you money in the long run because it will last you a lot lot longer and something like a decent set of rods should last you a lifetime if you don't sort of smash them up you know so um, hack number nine is buy the most expensive gear that you can afford. But hack number 10 to save you money is to buy second hand gear, particularly when you're starting out, you know, you, you don't want to spend an absolute fortune on tackle, but you still want something good quality. Now the best way to do that is to buy second hand because generally, you know, when you buy something second hand, you get a decent brand something for half the price of what it would have been new provided it's been looked after by the person you're buying it off then it should still be good quality and should last you a long long time so have a look online you know you've got places like eBay, Gumtree, lots of stuff for sale on Facebook these days but also don't forget your local tackle shop very important to support your local tackle shop and they often have a good second hand section and also very knowledgeable staff that can advise you on what's good and what's not so good, you know, in the second hand section. So first port of call would be go to your local tackle shop and then if you can't find what you need there then look online, ask your mates, you know, you might have people that have got some gear in the garage that they haven't used for a few years and might want to sell it, you know, if they're not planning on getting back into fishing. Ask around, you're bound to know people that are selling some gear and obviously things like Facebook Marketplace, eBay and Gumtree, as I said. But make sure you are buying from reputable places. Look for people's feedback on eBay and stuff like that. Make sure you're not buying dodgy gear, stolen gear. We don't want to encourage that, obviously. That's it for tip number 10, and that is to buy second hand. But stay tuned, because we've got a bonus tip coming up. Right, bonus tip time, guys. If you've got this far into the video, thanks very much. Leave a thumbs up, you've obviously enjoyed it. And the bonus tip, is going to be using packing foam for your melting nuggets on your rig you know like your sort of pva nuggets you can buy them from tackle companies by all means and they are going to be good quality i really like the carp craze ones they're multicolored so you can see them really brightly on the surface when they pop up and it gives you a visual sight marker to to fire your free bait out to but if you're on a budget and you want to save some money next time you get a parcel delivered those little nuggets that come in the, in the packaging that a lot of the companies are using these days are just the same thing as the ones you buy from the tackle company. As long as they're not the polystyrene ones, um, you have to check them in water. So, so put a couple in water and just sort of slosh them around a bit and make sure they do dissolve. And you'll find that they work perfectly well for, for the dissolving nuggets for your rigs. And actually, a lot of the time, they're the best ones you can get as well. So. If you, if you know someone who buys a lot of items online or if you buy a lot of things online, save them or ask people to save them for you. And you know, I've got a bin bag full of them, so that'll last me a good few years now. So I never have to buy them again. Uh, so I'd probably save myself a good bit of money there. So if you've liked the video guys, thanks very much for watching. Make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to my channel. Cause as I said, we're gonna be doing a video next next week probably all about getting sponsored which can save you an absolute fortune as well so make sure you check out that video leave a comment below if you've got any hacks for us to save money anything that you do that saves you money in your, in your fishing and yeah stay safe everyone um hopefully you're all you're all sort of uh, passing the time well at home and uh i hope, hope you enjoyed the video thanks very much for watching guys and i'll see you next time